21. Breaks it outside, looking for some room, cuts it up over the 20, he's got room. 25, 30, in the clear, 40, and knocked out of bounds in Michigan State territory. Cooper Rush became the third all-time leading passer at Central Michigan with another big performance over the weekend in East Lansing. The Chippewas, however, fell 30 to 10 to the Spartans. We've got the highlights for you next on Chippewa Rewind. Welcome into Chippewa Rewind presented by the Morning Sun. I'm Adam Jackson alongside head coach John Bonamigo. It was a frustrating loss for CMU Saturday afternoon at Spartan Stadium. Coach, another game where you had an opportunity to win late, this time against a high quality opponent, just fell a little bit short. Yeah, we knew it would be a tough game, but um, I thought our guys competed really hard. Uh, we expected to win that game, just like every other game. Uh, they obviously provi provide us some uh, big challenges, but in the end, we just couldn't pull it out. And you talked last week and said that would be your first time at Spartan Stadium. 75,000 fans. How unique was that for you and the guys? That's a great setting. It's something that's uh, easy to get excited about playing in a venue like that. And it was a lot of fun. Um, we enjoyed the experience and uh, disappointed with the loss. But again, there's a lot that we can learn from that, and it's going to make us a better football team. Let's jump right into the footage. The Chippewas get the football first after Michigan State elected to kick off. It's a third down, and you're in jeopardy of going three and out, but then you get a big play down the sideline. Yeah, it's a great throw by Cooper, finding Mark there. Uh, Mark gets behind the corner, and uh, big game. You end up missing a field goal. It gets blocked, and we push forward to Michigan State's drive, and they get a big catch down the field again for McGarrett Kings. Yeah, we're in quarters covers here, and we uh, get turned around a little bit, and uh, they do a nice job of finding an open receiver and get the ball out to midfield. A couple plays later, they find the end zone with a run to the left side. Yeah, a little bit of a uh, uh, power play there. Um, missed tackle there at the goal line. Uh, we need to do a little better job of fitting that. Uh, that's one of their staple plays. We should have done a better job against that. You put together that first drive, didn't get any points, but then you put together another good drive, and it starts off with a Cooper Rush pass again to Anthony Rice. Uh, Anthony had an excellent game for us, as did Cooper. Thought we did a good job in both of those opening drives of being able to keep the chains moving and, and getting in field goal position. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to capitalize on that. One of the ways you kept the chains moving with two straight third down completions, first to Kroll, and then you get it back to Anthony Rice again. Yeah, here's Cooper stepping up in the, in the pocket, finding Jesse out there on a curl route. Jesse doing a great job of catching the ball and then getting upfield. Uh, here's Cooper again, plenty of time in the pocket, finding Anthony on an underneath route, and then Anthony taking it upfield and getting enough for the first down. And then another third and 11 coming up, you find Mark Chapman. A little bit short of the chains, but still a good pass and catch from yeah, the two. Yeah, good job there by, by Chap uh, going up and, and catching the ball. Again, we're just a little bit short and, uh, you know, send out the field goal team. You did consider going for it, but again, you had the penalty back you up. Mm -hmm. What would you see on this, this kick? Well, we gave up way too much penetration inside. Um, you know, this is one of the things we've got to work on. Uh, you know, obviously they've got a good front. We knew that. Uh, guys that are long, that have a good reach. Uh, it really comes down to executing the fundamentals, set stepping, rising with power, getting our pads down. Uh, kick may have come out a little bit low, but uh, we've got to execute better in that phase, and we will. Later on, we push forward to that second quarter. It's 10 to nothing, Michigan State. You make a great defensive play deep in your own territory here with Frazier and Fountain. That's a great job by uh, Frazier coming up from the secondary. Again, uh, good tackling, good defense. Tell us a little bit about Malik Fountain. He had a career-high 10 tackles yesterday and just a redshirt freshman. He's played well for you. Malik is uh, definitely coming along. Love his intensity. He's got a good mind for the game. He's a great kid, works very, very hard, good athlete, and he's going to be a great player here for a long time. Happy to have him around for a couple of more years Absolutely. down the road. Three more after this one. 
the next play they are able to get in the end zone and find Josiah Price from five yards out. Yeah, this was uh, a good job by them. Uh, we're in, uh, we're blitzing there, and so they get man-to-man uh, -man coverage. Tight end makes a good move, uh, and their quarterback does a good job getting the ball to him. Third drive in a row, you get down into their territory. This one, you finish off with a touchdown, but it starts with a third down completion to Jesse. Yeah, Porter. big play there by Jesse. Uh, a lot of yards after contact. Good job of by Cooper getting the ball to him. And again, another third down and 10. Jesse Kroll makes another fantastic catch. We're kind of uh, developing a trend here. <laughs> but again, a um, little pressure there. Uh, underneath zones are vacated. Uh, Jesse does a nice job of opening up, staying in, the, in a window for Cooper. Cooper steps up, uh, delivers a, a strike to him, and, and good, good uh, pass protection there as well. Is there any stock we should put into that, the first and second downs? It seemed like you guys struggled, and then the third down you were able to, to move the chains, or is that just how it happened? It just kind of happens that way. And, and, you know, if you get on, off schedule, then that's what you end up doing, and maybe we weren't as efficient as we would like to have been on first and second down. Uh, some of that is trying to run the ball against, into, against a tough uh, Michigan State defense. But, you know, you can't pick and choose your spots. You, if you're going to be committed to the run, you've got you to keep trying. And, and it does help open up uh, things later on because you can't run play action passes without first running the football. It doesn't matter how you move down the field as long as you get there. You move the ball all the way to the one-yard line and finish off with a nice touchdown pass. Nice job here. Uh, Again, we decided to sprint uh, Cooper out. Uh, Rice gets in the end zone. Good reward for him. Uh, he had a great day. Uh, played an excellent football game. Uh, he was teasing me a couple weeks ago because I said uh, Corey Willis was one of my favorite players. Well, Anthony Rice is one of my favorite players, too. I'm sure you have a lot of favorites on that team, huh? I sure do. I love them all. 17-7 to is the score at the half. Coach, your feelings going into the break? Well, we're disappointed in the first two drives. Obviously, we didn't come away with points. Uh, you know, to go that far against a quality that, you know, a quality opponent like that, be able to move the ball, uh, we felt very confident. Thought our defense tightened up after the opening drive, and we, we feel like we're in a good spot. Again, we, we squandered two opportunities there to come away with points, uh, but you don't get those back. You got to just focus on the adjustments that you need to make in the second half. We'll break down that second half when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. Chippewas come out for that second half. They have to get a stop. And what do you tell the team at the half trying to get them to get a stop? Did you make any adjustments defensively coming out in that second half? Yeah, frame? defense made a couple adjustments. Really more or less, you know, making corrections to a couple alignment things that we had seen in the first half. Uh, and your message is just keep playing. You know, we're, we're right in this thing. And... Uh, Take it one play at a time, one snap at a time, one series at a time, and let's see what happens. Let's take a look at the next 30 minutes of play for the Chippewas. We start with a nice defensive play. Thought Amari Coleman had a terrific game yesterday. Gets a pass break up here. Yeah, Amari's a great young player. Uh, that's a great job of breaking on the ball, getting a hand down there, uh, causing the incompletion. Uh, he's played awfully well through us through the early stretch. Expect him to keep getting better, and uh, he's another guy that's going to have a bright future here. Blake Serpa has been tremendous since he stepped on this campus, comes up with a big play to get Connor Cook, who's scrambling around. It's a great job by Serpa, also with uh, Mitch Stanizak in there on the other side. Blake's a, a senior leader for us. It's great to have him back in the lineup. Coach, how important is it to get that opening stop to start the second half? Well, it confirms validity. Obviously, it's important to get a stop every time you play defense. But uh, coming off of uh, halftime like that, to be able to get them three and out, it sends a great message, and it's a great confidence, confidence builder and boost for our defense and our whole team. Your first play from scrimmage to start offensively is a nice run. Biggest of the day, 42 yards for Spalding. Huge play here. Uh, great job here of splitting the defenders. Gets a great 
uh, blocked down field there. I couldn't see who the wide receiver was. But, uh, you know, Spalding's able to turn on the Jets. Big game. Huge chunk of uh, real estate there exchange and, and really sets up the rest of the drive. Do you see his confidence growing as each week because he seems to be getting more comfortable out there? I think that comes from repetition and practice and, and really for a running back, early any position, you know, getting into a rhythm as the game uh, goes on. Couple plays forward, Rice makes another terrific catch, and how about this throw to the sideline by Cooper Rush? Again, talking about a guy that's in a great rhythm and in sync with his quarterback. You know, great route, great throw by Cooper, and again, a clean pocket, good pass protection. Third field goal attempt of the day, this one's true. Yes, uh, got a couple things corrected there, and uh, that's the way it's supposed to look. That's the result that we expect every single time. What adjustments did you make for that third field goal, if any? Well, I mean, it's more of an attitude thing, just getting, you know, having the right mindset, knowing what to expect, and, and getting the job done. All right, so we continue on that third quarter. You get a stop at 17 to 10. You're driving and a nice 23 yard pickup here. Again, you find Anthony Rice. <laughs> Guy's in a rhythm. Uh, I think he caught seven or eight yesterday. It was a huge game for him. Uh, Again, what you're seeing is Cooper spread the ball around a variety of different receivers. You know, last week was Ben McCord. First two weeks it was it was uh, Mark Chapman. This week it was Anthony Rice, and you know, with the heavy dose also of Jesse Kroll. He gave you an opportunity to go for it on fourth and two. Take us through this fourth down play and what you saw. Well, we we're really, really close here. They decide to to blitz up the middle. Uh, I think if that ball had been completed, Anthony might have scored on it. We had the corner on the outside, to the top of the screen turned inside. We also had Devin on the swing route. Um, good decision by Cooper, just a little pressure up the middle. Uh, couldn't get it completed. It was a great call by Coach Watts. So then we move on to that fourth quarter, and they get a touchdown to make it a two-possession lead. Yeah, good run by them. Good blocking scheme. We're, we weren't... Uh, we had a, an alignment issue there on that particular play and, and uh, got out of leverage a little bit. It's 24 to 10 and almost seems like your last chance here. A nice pass from Cooper, good catch by Jesse, but couldn't hold on to the football. Yeah, uh, very unfortunate here. I thought he had the ball uh, tucked away. Uh, probably was looking upfield and, and the same guy that's trying to tackle him does a really nice job really of, of, of stripping the ball out. I thought that was a key play in the game for them. Uh, you know, they're a great defensive team. You know, they've managed to create turnovers. That was a situation where they came up big, and, and unfortunately, we're on the uh, wrong end of this one. So the final score, 30 to 10. They did add one more touchdown late. You blocked the extra point, which was good. Obviously, not a not a win, but uh, what were your thoughts on the final, coach? Well, obviously, very disappointed. I uh, thought that we were right into the game right until the till the very end. Uh, much closer game, I believe, than the final score indicates. Uh, you know, tough to swallow it. It's tough to swallow any loss. We put an awful lot into that uh, from a preparation standpoint uh, and emotionally. Uh, we expect to win every time we take the field. And uh, to come up short is disappointing. However, there's lessons in this that we can learn. Uh, it'll make us a better team, and our focus now is getting ready for our home game against Northern Illinois, which is this coming Saturday. We'll talk about that upcoming game on Saturday when we come back and break down the Huskies on Chippewa Rewind. Hey CMU fans, experience Central Michigan University and all there is to do around campus by visiting Ticket Central, your one-stop shop for all your favorite CMU events. Ticket Central staff is ready to greet you with a smile and assist you with all your ticketing needs. Whether it be for athletic events, plays, concerts, and more, we've got you covered. For further information, you can visit the atrium of the Event Center Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or give us a call at 888-347-347. 3872. At Ticket Central, we're here to help get you wherever you want to go. Every game certainly is important, but the front end of this schedule is very difficult, and you have to put Michigan State behind you. You've got the 
Mac champion coming in this Saturday to play you on homecoming big Saturday coming up for the Chippewas. Certainly is. Uh, as I told our team, our preseason's over and, and now uh, they all matter, but these really count. And so this is a big football game for us, having Northern Illinois come in uh, in our stadium this week, defending MAC champions, as you mentioned, and uh, it should be a great football game. Tell us what you know about the Huskies and how tough it's going to be. They've got a great quarterback, Hare, who's coming back for his second season. He's been really good in the conference. Yeah, I mean, they, they're, they're an excellent team. I think they're playing very well defensively. Uh, They've, uh, they've lost to uh, Ohio State and uh, Boston College. They took both of those games to the wire. Uh, they're a great football team. They're very well coached. Uh, they've done a great job there with their culture. And, uh, you know, we're excited for this opportunity and we'll be ready to play them. How important is the crowd impact going to be? It's homecoming. I'm sure you want another big crowd coming out on Saturday afternoon. Well, we expect the crowd to show up, be loud, be proud. Students want to see that section's packed. Uh, thing I'd like you to do is stick around for the celebration afterwards. Uh, you know, stay in the stadium till the game's over and uh, help us celebrate a great homecoming victory. In order to get that victory, Coach, give us some keys to getting the win on Saturday afternoon. Well, we're going to have to clean up some of the mistakes that have played, uh, plagued us here the, recently. Know, particularly the pre-snap penalties. Uh, we're going to have to do a great job of taking care of the football. We've been fairly good in that area. Uh, need to find a way to take it away on defense. If we can get a, a turnover or two, that'd be, uh, that'd be really great. And uh, we need to be sound in the kicking game. You know, Northern Illinois is a team that can hurt you. Uh, one of their touchdowns they scored last week against Boston College was on a long uh, kickoff return. So uh, they've got some uh, good players in that area, and, and we're going to have to be hitting on all cylinders. Well, Coach, it's, it's almost a new season starting conference. You could start with a clean slate. Wish you the best of luck this weekend against the Huskies, and hopefully you get that second win. Thank you very much, and uh, look forward to a great crowd. Uh, thanks for all the support, and fire up. All right, that'll conclude our show. Another huge game coming up this weekend as we talked about. It's homecoming as Central Michigan welcomes in the defending MAC champion, Northern Illinois. Make sure you come out to Kelly Short Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Kickoff is at 3 o'clock. For Coach John Bonamigo, I'm Adam Jaxa. Join us again Monday for our first show in October as we break down the conference opener for CMU. Until next time, fire up chips.